We're at a stoplight. What are we doing? Well, indirect action today. Indirect action. It's going to be action packed as I put my finger in front of the lens like an 80 year old man. You're going to put this one in? Probably pick it up, put it down. Pick yeah. it up, put it down. Some, some, oh, Arnold, do. some Arnold stuff. Yeah. All right, Mount Zion. We're going to the top of the mountain. We'll see you soon. I don't know what is going on here. But I don't think that does much of anything. See that? No, that would be Let's 1997. It's 97. In the, the year of our Lord, yeah. 1997. We are trying to diagnose 100% with 100% certainty that this indirect is bad. It was diagnosed by another company and we were dispatched for a second opinion. So we're going to make 100% sure that that is the case before we condemn this indirect tank. So we have a known good gauge added to the system on the hydronic side. I have the feeder valved off so that I know no water is entering the boiler through the feed water pipe. And we're going to see if the pressure of the boiler increases. And if it does, that means that the coil in this tank is bad and it needs to be replaced. And so far, it's probably about four or five minutes of waiting. My pressure has not moved, not even a little bit. I only have about eight PSI in there and it hasn't gone up at all in the last five minutes. So I'm losing hope that this tank is bad. What's the diagnosis? So, come over here, I'll show you. Okay, I'm, I'll come over, I'll take a look. Put in a new expansion tank. What is this tank? This is our EX30. Okay, do we install this in the future? We installed this we tank did. tomorrow. Yes, today is actually the 29th, <laughs> so we Yeah, what do we put in on top of the tank? We have a service port, so you can turn this off, you can purge it. Um, What's this valve here it. allow us to do? So you can take it off, so you can test the air pressure in it. Okay, this is like a very spe specific word, it starts with an I. This allows us to, this I word, mm -hmm. the tank from the system. Isolate. Isolate. Good. Yup, that allows us to isolate the expansion tank from the system because this has got big hydronic main piping and a lot of water that we do not want to drain when we service this. So we put that valve in, allow us to check the tank without draining anything other than the expansion tank. If we put that tank in, why? Uh, basically shot. Basically shot? Yeah, we had like two PSI. It was 100% 100, 100 shot. Had zero PSI in it. Definitely no good. What else did we change? Yeah, relief valve. Okay. It was dripping a little bit. Why do you think the relief valve was dripping? I just think it wasn't in great condition, to be honest with you. No? Yeah. Do you think it had anything to do with the lack of ex uh, pressure in the expansion tank? I do think it had. You do think so? Do. How sure are you that it had to do with that? There was no pressure in there. It wasn't full of water though, was it? Well, if there's no pressure in there, that means that the tank, at some point when the boiler is operating, mm -hmm. was full of water. Okay. So you should be 100% sure that that's the reason why the relief valve was leaking. Yes. As soon as we took pressure off the boiler, what happened to the existing relief valve? She opened up. No, it stopped dripping. Stopped dripping? Yes. Yeah. We changed it because the other one did not look like it was as new as the customer said. So we changed it for a known good one. Once the boiler is drained to change the expansion tank, it's cheap and easy to change the relief valve. Plus the drop pipe on there was only about three inches long. So we changed it for one that's the proper distance off the floor. What's the rest of our diagnosis? What'd we get called here for? They thought that the- uh, The indirect was leaking, they thought. Leaking into? The hydraulic system. Correct. So the coil inside this tank was thought by somebody else, another company, to have a pinhole or multiple pinholes and was leaching high pressure domestic water into the low pressure hydronic piping, which was causing the relief valve on the boiler to pop. Uh, we tested this with a standing pressure test and found that that was not the case. The boiler is up to operating temperature now and we're still holding about 13 PSI, which is perfection. So the whole reason this uh, relief valve was discharging in the first place was because of a bad expansion tank. So we went from, or not we, but the customer went from having to spend buku bucks 
She called us out to get a second opinion and we just saved her a lot of money. Got called for a furnace noise, did not find a furnace noise, but we did find a bad run capacitor or start capacitor, whatever you call it. Where the, where the frig is it? Oh, here it is. This is a 10 microfarad capacitor. So we're gonna change it out with a Mars. This is a Turbo 200 Mini. We have the big Turbo 200s. And I always read the instructions on new stuff. What's 2.5 plus 7.5? I don't know. Come on, kid. <laughs> you just say nine? Yeah, it's nine. <laughs> yeah, simple game, simple game. And we'll put this little mini guy in there. Bam, secure it with a strap. Off we, off we go to the race. Turbo 200 Mini strapped up nice. Shouldn't what be in here? The filter? Yeah. It's probably in a return air grill. On the ceiling. Up in the ceiling. Yep. On site with a bronze circulator hot water recirc. It's DOA. We're going to change it. This expansion tank is also uh, filled with water. We're going to check and see if we can salvage it. If not, we'll change that as well. And then our purge station is backwards. So we're going to remedy this whole thing. This was put in by someone else and we're going to fix the issues and put it back into service. First order of business is going to be to drain this ST5. Uh, the valve is open and it let out just that little bit of water and you can see visibly that the tank is kind of hinging on this 90 here and it's very heavy. So it wasn't put in that long ago, but seems to be a dud. So we put this valve in when we did this tank on September 9th. That's oh, my birthday. I put this in on my, birth, on, my oh, really? on my day of birth. Happy birthday. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, thanks. So this allows us to drain the tank. And we're going to be able to change it. Uh, unfortunately, with the installation of the new circulator, this is going to have to change anyway. So what this tank, is. although it's small, holds a couple of gallons of water. So when it's full, it's kind of heavy and cumbersome to remove. So we hook our air compressor up to the charge port on the bottom of the tank. And we're going to force the water out of the tank so that it becomes empty. Okay, we're all done. Hot water recirc line has been repiped to accommodate the new pump with a new three quarter spring check from Vega. Our brand new recirc bronze pump has an integrated flow check, so we do not need a check valve pre pump, just one as it enters the tank. We also have our thermal expansion tank, brand new, with a hold right bracket. This allows getting the tank off of here to be pretty simple. Also our ISO valve so we can check the pre-charge without having to get uh, water shut off to the house or drain the water heater. That's a nice little feature. And then we have our uh, press purger from Webstone as well up there for purging the hot water recirc line. The previous one was backwards so this one is installed correctly. And we have our punch list here so that we and the homeowner know what was done on what day and also the tank is dated as well with the pre-charge pressure listed on there. This home has 55 PSI incoming water pressure and it does have a pressure reducing valve and a backflow preventer. So that's why this tank is required. Other than that, it's a good job. Job well done.